Hello everybody and welcome to the Family DIY channel. Today I'm going to go ahead and show you how to do a basic home brew right inside your own home kitchen. So stick around. So now that you've decided to join in the adventure of doing home brewing, there's a few things you need to have first. First of all, you need some delicious beer to drink while you're brewing. Second, you need to have a brewing kit. I went ahead and picked this up at my local home brew store, but you can also order these online on Amazon. In the description below, I have a couple links to some great options you can order from online. For today's demonstration, I visited my local home brew store and picked up all the ingredients we're going to need to make a basic oatmeal stout. So let's look at all the ingredients and get brewing. For this recipe, we'll need three pounds of the extra dark dried malt extract, one pound of oats, 10 ounces of dark chocolate, 12 ounces of two row pale, and six ounces of victory. We need half a pound of maltodextrin, one ounce of brewer's gold bittering. You'll need a thing of yeast. And since we are not doing an all grain brew this time, you're gonna need 3.3 pounds of light liquid malt extract. It is vitally important to remember this one rule of brewing, keeping everything sanitized. I use star sand to keep everything nice and clean. I'm using a spray bottle, which I've filled with a sanitizing liquid to keep all my utensils and equipment nice and sanitized during the entire brewing process. Remember, if you want to follow along with this recipe, I have the recipe in the description below. Now it's time to start brewing. The first part of the recipe calls to steep the grains in water at 155 degrees. To maintain that temperature, I decided to use my Innova sous vide that would be able to maintain the temperature the entire time. You don't need to have one of these, but I'd highly recommend going and picking one of these up, not only for your brewing ease, but also making delicious meats. We are now ready to start steeping the grains in the water. Using a cotton muslin bag, put all your grains into it. A trick I found so you don't spill your grains everywhere is put the entire bag itself in there, then using a scissor, cut open the bag and pour it in. If you do it correctly, you will not make any mess. So the grains do not come out, tie a knot into one end of it. Now bring the bag over and drop it into the water gently. Now after letting it steep for a while, bring the entire bag out using another bowl so you don't make a big mess onto the ground. Rinse all the grains in your bag over your main brewing pot to get all the flavors out. The liquid you now have in your pot is considered the wort. Add enough water to your pot to bring it up to two and a half gallons. Now it's time to turn on your stove, bringing your wort to a gentle rolling boil. It is now time to add your LME, your DME, and your maltodextrin to the boiling wort. Continuously stir the extract into the wort as it returns to a gentle rolling boil. The LME, which is the liquid malt extract, is a very sticky substance. To get any residual LME out of the can, use warm water to loosen it up. After they all been added, continuously stir the extract into the wort as it returns to a gentle rolling boil. Slowly sprinkle the bittering hops into the boiling wort. Be careful not to let the wort boil over in the pot. Continue the boiling for 60 minutes. Now that it's been 60 minutes of boiling and you've drinking a couple beers yourself, it is time to start cooling down the wort. If you have all the right equipment, you can use a wort chiller. However, you can also just use a bag of ice and water to cool it down. You want to try and bring the temperature down as fast as possible. Using the ice bag and water does work, but it's not as efficient. But using a wort chiller is much faster. Keep checking the temperature until it hits 70 degrees. It is now time to siphon your wort into a sanitized fermenter. Don't forget to sanitize everything. 
Using an auto siphon, you can transfer all the liquid into your fermenter. Just give it a few pumps and the liquid will start flowing. You want to avoid transferring the heavy sediment from the brew pot to the fermenter. Once it's all transferred, you want to add enough clean water, approximately 64 to 72 degrees Fahrenheit, to the fermenter to bring the wort to approximately 5 gallons. Using your hydrometer, be careful not to add a volume of water that will cause the wort to fall outside of the original gravity range specified by the brew stats. Once you are satisfied your wort is at the proper volume and within the OG range, record the OG in the alcohol by volume calculator. I have provided a link below to a website that does the calculations for you. It is now time to sprinkle the entire contents of your yeast over the top of the entire wort surface and you want to stir it with a sanitized spoon. Continue stirring gently until all the yeast is evenly distributed into the wort. Now that the yeast has been stirred into the wort, firmly attach the lid to your fermenter. Once it's secure, you can now add your airlock to the top. Airlocks are designed where when you put the water in, it allows the gases from the inside of the fermenter to bubble out, but prevents any air from coming in. As a reminder, you can pick up all these items on Amazon. I have provided links to each one of them in the description below. For this next step, it depends on how much money you want to invest into brewing. You can just move your fermenter to a dark, warm temperature area, approximately 64 to 72 degrees, and leave it in there for the fermentation time. Or you can be like me and have a full fermentation chamber set up with temperature probes, heaters, and chillers using an inkbird setup. Check in the description below. I have a link to my videos on how to set up a fermentation chamber as you see here. You will also see a link to it in the end screen. The wort will begin to ferment within 24 hours and you'll start to notice CO2 releasing out of the airlock. Within 4-6 to six days the bubbling will slow down until you see no more CO2 being released. When the fermentation is complete, take an FG reading with a sanitized hydrometer and record it into your ABV calculator. You can choose to bottle your beer now, however you also have the option of doing a secondary fermentation. The benefit of a secondary fermentation is it improves the clarity by reducing the amount of sediment in your finished beer. To do this it's very simple. All you need to do is siphon out the beer from the first fermenter and transfer it into a second and let it ferment for a couple more days. If you plan on doing this, take the FG rating for the calculator at the end of your secondary fermentation. After all that hard work, it is now time to bottle your beer. It is very important that you sanitize your caps, your bottles, and any of the equipment you're going to be using for the bottling process. Now that everything is sanitized, we need to get the priming sugar ready. In a small saucepan, dissolve the priming sugar into two cups of boiling water for five minutes. Priming sugar will reactivate the yeast in your bottles, giving your beer the carbonation it needs. Pour this mixture into a clean bottling bucket. I am using my first fermenter. Now carefully siphon the beer from the secondary fermenter to the bottling bucket. Avoid transferring any sediment. Gently stir for about one minute. You can now take the FG reading with a sanitized hydrometer and record it into your FBV calculator. Attach a spring-loaded beer bottle filler to your siphon and then start filling your bottles. Allow the beer to flow nearly to the top of the bottle. When you stop and pull the filler out of the bottle, you'll notice the beer level drops slightly to the proper height you need for each one of your bottles. Repeat this process as many times as needed. Once your bottle is full, you can now start capping each one of the bottles. You can see here that I'm using one of the hand-operated bottle cappers. And don't worry, absolutely nothing could go wrong when you're capping a bottle. Or that could happen. Pro tip, 
always wear shoes when you're capping bottles. Now that's what it's supposed to look like. Once you're done capping all the bottles, move the bottles to a dark, warm, temperature stable area. Over the next two weeks, the bottles will naturally carbonate. Carbonation times may depend on the temperature and the beer style, so be patient if it takes a week or so longer. After allowing your beer to carbonate in the bottles for a couple weeks, we are now onto the best part of home brewing, and that is drinking your own beer. So let's have some beer. Cheers. Mm. That is some really good beer. So thank you for watching my home brewing video today. If you found this video to be useful, please give us a thumbs up and don't forget the subscribe button for all of our other beer related and other home related projects. Also, if you found this recipe to be interesting, we have the entire recipe in the description below, as well as links to all the products you need to start your own home brewing. Thank you very much and happy brewing.